Got rid of the dogs. Okay, the recording has just started. The meeting is recorded because it's a public meeting, so it will be available on the website after. Thank you. All right, so open forum for public participation. Is there anyone? Hi, Kim. Am I the only public person? Or <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Well, I'm. I'll just quickly. I can't stay for long, and I'll just introduce myself and and explain what I'm doing here. Um, my name is Susan Lusa Hughes, and I'm a parent um, in Tolland, Connecticut. DDS client. Uh, my daughter is a, a DDS client and um, has multiple disabilities. And I'm a, also a colleague of Kim going back a, a, a long way. And I'm, I was, I've always been interested in these meetings, these regional advisory council meetings, because on the website, it, it seems to position them as a, a chance to um, talk directly with the leadership of DDS in your region and you know, if you have concerns or if you have questions, uh, you can broach them and, and get them answered. Um, and yet I uh, struggle a little bit because I can never find out when these meetings are, how to join, how to share that information with people that I know would be interested and find it valuable. Um, and and I've, I've voiced these this input before um, in previous RAC meetings, as well as to uh, the the statewide leadership. So just, you know, I'm here just for my, my own interest and in sharing out into my community. I'm also the, the chair of a, a commission on people with disabilities here in Tallinn. So I'm always interested in what's going on that I can share back with our, our uh, community. Um, but just, just take that for what it's worth, I, I wish that these meetings were more, uh, were better shared out to the, the larger um, community of, of individuals and families who might find the information and the conversation and the collaboration valuable. So um, I'm just here to listen, but thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, is there is there any way that we could um, let people know sooner than the day before? Just so the, it's always available on the website. We we're required by the state of the Secretary of State's office to have all these public meetings posted. So all the minutes are posted. The schedule needs, has to be posted, which is the third. We always do the third Wednesday of the month, um, yep. except for the summer. Um, the the minutes of every meeting is posted. The agenda is required to be posted at least 24 hours before. We try to do it sooner than that. But it's always the same link on the website. And I can, I mean, I can share the direct link to, to get there, but oh, it's yeah. right on the boards and councils. Oh, okay. If you go to our main web page, there's a section that says boards and councils. And that has all of the regional RAC meeting, the um, central office council meetings. Um, all of the public meetings that were required okay. to post on the website. Um, but you're saying that the um, the link would be the same for every meeting. So once the you link have it, is generally the same, unless I need to change oh. it. If if something okay. changes with Teams or something, we have to sometimes change the link. But mm -hmm. the link is always on the agenda when I post the agenda on the website. Right. Um, right. And then the reason we do the I send the reminder the day before is just so people have it um, because that just basically goes to members. I mean, other than the sharing publicly, I send it out to the members just so you have right. an easy, you know, if people put it aside and forget, it's just really a reminder and the link is more accessible. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm just thinking if it's there and it's the same link, then mm -hmm. why can't, you know, people can just use the same link, link over and over. And that's, it, it is unless, unless okay. I send, you know, unless it's changed and then it'll okay all right good and I send it that's, that's and very if you good. attend regularly I add you onto the email so you'll get my you'll get the email with the new link yeah and I can actually 
I think Susan is just saying that she wants to be able to let other people know from her commission. I so. think wasn't there um, don't they the case managers usually share that also Stacy? No, um, not at all. Nope. No, I rarely see my case manager. It, it's yeah. supposed to be part of. Um, I know there was a something formal that came out that it was going to be shared. Um, when our attendance came became really low a couple of years ago, um, but they okay. they were trying to find broader ways of spreading it more, you know, widely to get more members. Um, yeah. And I can bring that. Uh, this is Stacy Silva, the oh. regional director of the North Region. I can bring that uh, idea back to my administration to work with case management to spread the word as well. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. I'm writing down all the names for, <laughs> and I'll give it to you. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, is there anyone else who would like to um, talk or speak? Karen. Hi, I just want to introduce myself. I, um, my name is Karen Bohr and I'm a special ed teacher in the town of Coventry and I had the pleasure of working with Kim and Ellen over the summer and um, they invited me to to join the group because I would like more knowledge about DDS um, as being a transition um, in our district. So, so I am here, so I just wanted to introduce myself. That is why I'm here. Um, and I did have a question, um, like, but you answered it. The case managers are supposed to let everyone know when the meetings are. That was, how do okay. we let everybody know? So, okay. oh, all right. I'm just saying, this is Claudia again. Um, not necessarily let them know when they are. They're, those are posted on the website. I'm not right, sure the case right. managers know when they are. Our schedule is different. We have six meetings a year. We're required to have six meetings. We schedule eight. We um, every region holds them at different times and different, right. you know, evenings. We we chose the third Wednesday of every month, but um, the schedule is posted on the on. Yeah, and they know like when they start with DDS, they're told that they have these meetings and everything's online. Um, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, how many Thank how you. many members um, is typical for this um, group? I know we have 12. Um, the, the requirement is 10. There's also a oh, little okay. write up. I think I sent you the link. Kim. Yes. I can send yes. that also um, the whole description of the, the actual statute. It's it's part of a okay. statute, so we have a okay. requirement of having certain mm -hmm. um, members, you know, a certain number of parents, a certain number of um, people from the outside at one I think at one point it said we were supposed to have an attorney which Kathleen Hayes used to be our <laughs> representative she there awesome. um there's certain requirements and it, we're required to have 10 the membership is supposed to be um at least 10. all right that sounds good <laughs> thank you we're giving you a lot of questions tonight <laughs> um all right how about the the legislative update um Rick's not here. He's usually the guru. So, does there anybody have any information about that or? No. Okay. Then I guess we move on to the regional director's update. Okay. Uh Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for taking the time out to uh, join the, the RAP meeting. Um, again, my name is Stacy Silva, and uh, the updates that I have to share with you are that we have uh, new monthly newsletters that are now uh, being emailed to uh, individuals and families, and they also can be found on our website. And that's an effort for us to be able to improve communication with families and individuals and providers. So um, I hope that you know you can take the time out to to look at them. They're all uh, listed there in our um, in our website. Uh, we also are excited in the department in regards to STEP, meaning supporting transformation to empower people. And basically we're looking for um, promoting independence, creativity, and you know, getting um, 
services, uh, uh, more uh, introduction into for use of technology and um, inclusion. And um, it's a very exciting time. And we have a series of step videos that are going to be out. Um, I believe right now we do have one uh, individual home supports video came out, but there are other various videos that will be coming out. And this is a campaign also to just showcase to individuals and families the various support services um, that are out there. Um, so we will be having a supportive housing video uh, coming, um, community companion home, self-direction, employment, assistive technology, and remote supports. So uh, look out for those. Um, we'll be sending out a notification when those videos are um, going to be released. And they're gonna be released in a variety of different forums just to try to reach as many people as possible. Um, and th this is an effort to you know, build the communication and also build the collaboration with individuals, families, and providers. Um, this fall, um, I found out today that uh, the deputy, com the, the commissioner, Jordan Chef, and deputy commissioner, Elisa Villardo, <laughs> will be scheduling um, their fall forums. And, um, you know, they're hoping to get, you know, great sh uh, participation in that. And at this forum, they will provide their annual updates and they will also answer questions. Um, and at this time, uh, the dates that they have reserved are October 10th and it'll be 6 to 8 p.m., October 12th, 9 to 11 a.m., October 17th, 6 to 8 p.m., and October 18th, 9 to 11 a.m. And the last I also wanted to share is, uh, I think, you know, I, I believe I shared this previously in, in previous meetings, but um, we have the fourth Tuesday forums that our Deputy Commissioner Elisa Villardo has been um, being very consistent in providing uh, education in you know, the various uh, service services that we provide. And they have been uh, a wonderful addition to uh, what we've been doing in the department as far as getting the word out on um, various services. And um, I, it's great to see some of you have signed on to some of those. So they are the fourth Tuesday of every month and they're live from 3 to 4 p.m. And they're also recorded so that they're on our website and all the previous ones are there. If you ever have um, some time to take a look at some of those videos, they're um, in live forums that we had, they're, they're phenomenal. Um, we have providers speaking of their experience of providing supports um, to individuals and families, but we also have individuals and families themselves given their personal stories and um, how they arrived um, in the position that they are. And, and um, it's just wonderful to hear personal accounts of how the support services can um, help you, to, you know, t individuals to live the life that uh, they want to. Um, so. The next one is September 26th coming up, and that will be on customized individual home supports. And um, I definitely uh, would love for you guys to sign on to, to view that. There will be a story shared about someone that had left a congregate setting and went to their own um, apartment. And so um, I'm, you know, I'm excited about that. I'm looking forward to that. Um, the other future uh, forms that are scheduled um, October 23rd is the Community Companion Homes. November 28th, we have Pathways to community, com Competitive Integrated Employment. And January 23rd, we have Remote Support Solutions. So um, we have a lot going on and it's just really an exciting time uh, for the department to be able to have ARPA funding and to be able to uh, work collaboratively with individuals and families and providers. Thank you. That was great. Um, is is there anything else that people would like to discuss, or is there anything that we would like to maybe bring a presenter in? Any topics or concerns? 
Ooh, it's a quiet group tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and definitely I um, invite you to, you know, send me uh, any communication, you know, call me or, or send me an email if there are any topics that you would love for the deputy commissioner to include in our uh, Tuesday forums. Um, we welcome okay. any ideas and also, you know, as you um, led to Kim that we, we would love to, you know, invite pre- presenters here if there's a topic that everyone wants to uh, kind of be more informed about. Okay. Yeah, I know. Um, in when I first joined, um, we did have people come in and discuss different topics, um, and it was really helpful. Um, so, Ellen, Ellen, maybe we have- could talk. Yeah, I got something. Okay. Maybe we could talk about um, how people should about the handicap stickers. Oh, uh, the accessible parking. Mm-hmm. Yep. Maybe yeah. we should say something about that. We could. Yeah, we've we've had some issues where uh, people are parking <laughs> in accessible parking who shouldn't be parking there. Um, mm-hmm. There's there's no sticker. There's nothing to even let you know that they should be there. Um, so I said to Ellen, maybe we should come up with a sticker that might be educational that we could put on you the windshield. No, not too big. big. Not too bad, but yeah, okay. anyway. Thank you, yep. Ellen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, just wow. I just remember that. Yes, no, I know that was a big issue for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I have to say, this is, this is a big shout out for Susan in that um, in our town, we have not really had accessibility to all of the um, things that municipal things, like if you want to get to the library or you need to go to the town hall because we haven't had sidewalks that are ADA accessible. Um, And the commission has was able to um, get the town to now put in sidewalks, which is a huge accomplishment. So, yay. Wow. (laughs) And let me return the the compliment because Kim was right there every step of the way. She resigned what just la- just this year for personal yeah. reasons, but you know definitely should share in the in yeah. in the congratulations for getting that. It took four years, four years, and yeah. we still have um, opposition and and you know and you guys all know this because you you live in this world. But when Kim and I, before there was even a commission, when we were tossing ideas around we we knew that the biggest challenge in in having or forming a commission you know to get something changed or done was going to be to change the way people think and yes. and and that is pr- being is proving to be the hardest and and it you know sidewalks they'll go in but if you know there's still so much opposition and misunderstanding and you know misinformation about why we needed them in the first place and we we have we still have a long way to go but I'm, i won't take up any more time thank you cam you 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 were a big part of it. it was a lot of work that was a lot of work so um and i think that's a huge point is really changing people's mindsets yeah um you know so hopefully that will help some some towns but that's a big that's a huge thing that's a huge task um, yeah, and currently I'm I'm taking a, a certification course in assistive technology, and it you know it, it that's that's a big part of it too is changing people's mindset into you know being more open to um, the different you know tools and things out there that can be you know helpful to to everyone. Well, and you know in doing that, you're also um, helping people to be more independent, to trust in themselves as well, instead of having um, somebody there with you all the time. Um, yeah. And getting buy-in for the, you know, getting buy-in for people that can, you know, utilize the supports as well. It's, yes, it's huge. definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I say something? I'm not, you know, can I just ask a question? Just um, Yes. W- one thing that came up uh, on the employment and day services call that I was just on 
was a conference that I guess happened today, right? Um, at the convention center on employment. And I, I just, I didn't know anything about it. And I, um, I guess it's put on by the, the um, Department of Aging and the, uh, however it's termed now, the Bureau of Rehab Services and Department of Aging, but it, it's geared towards employers, educating employers on the benefits and incentives that are, are available for hiring people with disabilities and then also um, geared towards uh, educating potential employees and people with disabilities on how to get jobs. So, um, boy, I feel like that was a missed opportunity because I didn't find mm -hmm. out about it until whatever that, you know, I, uh, I would have loved to go. And I, I, I wish that that was promoted on a wider basis to the DDS community. Cause I didn't know anything about it. Um, and when I say DDS community, I, I mean, DDS individuals getting services in their families. Um, and, yeah. and that was just something that, you know, I, I was so surprised and, and I well, would, Susan, <clears throat> excuse me, Susan, that one, I believe that one was in North Haven. No, it was the it Hartford was, Convention Center. It was because I, yep. I did receive a letter, but it was for North Haven. And I'm worried I can, that's too far for us. Yeah, no, it was, well, you know, really? Hartford Convention Center, it had, you know, a bunch of employees. Uh, the man's name was, I have it right here on my team, so I can look real quick. I had emailed afterwards um, and and I found the link. It's on B, the, the, you know, if you search employment, services conference um let's see was that today was that i i believe today? i believe it was today so sad i missed too yeah it was next. Mm -hmm. there but, was one today in waterbury um, really yeah. yeah yeah i had posted that on the um connecticut dds family empowerment group david that that's why david <laughs> Um, it, it was David Dukas, and he, and it was, let's see if I can find it. Uh, well, anyway, I posted it on our Facebook page, so I can go there real quick. But in any case, it was, it, it, it would have been, um, I think, something of huge interest mm -hmm. yeah. for our, our people. And our, yeah. and, you know, uh, just again, to kind of angle it towards, my little area of the of the world, which is, you know, way off the beaten path. We don't have transportation. We don't have, you know, housing opportunities um, out here in in Tallinn. Right. Um, the 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 employment situation is just as I want to don't want to say bad, but it is. And and so part of that challenge is is trying to educate employers, and and right. this would have been really helpful to. You know, be able to to blast blast to our local, even not local, east of the river. It doesn't have to be local. Yeah. Um, I, it would help us. I think that you. Will, it, oh, go ahead, Ellen. Go ahead. It would help us because then it would like educate people, like how you're. You don't only need you if you like. You, you can educate people that like if they need help with anything on like a certain job or whatever i don't know um, um that is yeah. definitely um that our it yes absolutely and and that's definitely the department's <laughs> focus as well we just recently hired a director of employment services so you will see a, a larger focus on awesome. exactly what you're talking about and that's yeah. why on november 28th there's pathways to competitive integrated employment um so that's definitely a, a start um but you know, we just hired a director of employment um, services. Awesome. I just posted in the chat the link, and I apologize. I'm totally yeah. wrong. It's a uh, it's next Wednesday, so um, there oh. is some time. So um, yeah. who knows? Maybe I can get myself there. It's September 27th. Wow, can awesome. you send the link in the chat? Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I yeah. would take my students there in our van. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, oh. I'll get my daughter to go, and yeah. you know, and and I think that one of the things that we've heard again, sorry, just locally, is that businesses are open to it, 
open to hiring people, but they just don't know how to do it. If it's scary to them because I've had people say to me, we can't make more work for someone. And that's their fear is that bringing someone in with a disability is going to make more work for someone. And when, and when you know, that's not really the case if, if you get, if we get them educated. Yeah, I agree. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a big topic um, on the employment forum that we were part of. I think you will it's definitely see. Employees. You'll yeah. definitely see more focus in the department um, um, in that area. Definitely. Good. Good. Susan, what time was it again? Sorry, Al, I'll get it to you. Okay, I'm in Hartford right. anyway, so. Okay, that's fine. All right, we're going to let Donna say something. Uh-oh, can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I just, I guess I, I, we're talking about employment. So I'll just share, um, some of you might've been on the same employment group thing I was on a few days ago, I'm not sure. Um, but I'll just share my small experience with this. Um, so, um, oh, I should say I'm Donna and I have a 31 year old diagnosed with autism and in, um, intellectual disability. and. Along with that comes some interesting and complicated and unexpected behaviors at times. So um, looking for a job is certainly complicated, especially when you're talking about integrated, um, you know, minimum wage job. But I went into one of those, I never know what it's called, like body and bath places, you know, where like all the stuff is, all the blue stuff is in one place, all the pink stuff. It's like perfect for her. It like totally feeds into the best part of her autism. She can do that. She can organize that way. And, um, and she does. When she goes in there, you know, you always find that weird blue bottle in the green and she, my girl is on that in, in a hot minute and she's fixing that. So I started thinking, geez, she could do this. This would be a great job for her. So I went to talk to um, the manager and I gave her a very brief description. I didn't go into a lot because I wasn't sure where this would go. And I always worry about her, um, you know, her own personal things. I don't like to share it unless I need to. Um, so I explained to them what I was looking for that, you know, I think she would be great at this job, gave them all the good reasons why. Um, I said, you know, do you put stuff on the shelves before customers come in? And she said, yes. And I, then I thought, oh, now we're in like Flynn. I mean, this is awesome. I don't even have to worry about the general public. So um, I explained that I would come with her and um, I could help her if need be, but mostly she would probably be able to do this by herself and she would really enjoy it and it would be fulfilling for everyone. And I said, I'm sure she would do this faster than like your average employee because this is what she does. And the woman really, she listened and I could tell she was just struggling with the concept as she was looking at my child talking about Barney the dinosaur next to me. And, um, and she finally just said she was worried about the liability. And I, I was like, but I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here with her. She will never, ever, ever be unsupervised. Not for one moment will she be unsupervised. And um, she just couldn't get past it. So I said, well, you know, is there like a general manager I could talk to? Maybe there's somebody who does like your territory or whatever. And she said, no, we, we um, do our own hiring and, you know, so forth. And. It was just such a disappointment because, yeah. man, this would just, it just made so much sense in my brain. I could totally picture it. And um, so I just think we have a lot of educating to do. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of fear. And uh, you know what? Truth be known, I understand the liability issue. I truly do. But if there's things that we can do to minimize that for people, I think that's something we're gonna have to, we're gonna all be faced with it and we're gonna have to come up with some solutions. Mm -hmm. So I would really look forward to talking about this more with people and just yes. find out what they do, like people who have been yes. successful with complicated situations, you know, what have they done? And I'd, I'd really like to hear from people. I remember at one of our meetings, we saw a video of people who were at work, 
but none of those people looked like my child. I mean, one person like could parallel park. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> well, so I, I guess I'm looking for some role models slash um, advisors, perhaps, who have already done this with this under the same situation. And if anybody knows of that, I'd, I'd really love to talk to them personally, but even better, I think it would be interesting to have them as a guest because yes. it, it would be super helpful. And it would be encouraging too. I, I'm i feeling like a little bit uh, about the whole thing. So I could use a little bit more encouragement to continue to go out and find things for her. Um, so that would be I, and, my suggestion. And, um, you know, I, I I think that DDS, we share the same sentiments, Donna, and I can tell you that I had someone reach out uh, from central office, the communications de uh, department to um, ask me in regards to in the North region, we have a, a business called Beans and Company, and it's an integrated working environment. And we are trying to reach out to them to see if they would come in and speak about how, you know, they have put together this enterprise of people, you know, uh, working together, you know, with others with disabilities and having an integrated working environment. So that's something that we're working on. So stay tuned. Um, hopefully by maybe next meeting, I could have more of an update, but they did reach out and, and state that mm -hmm. that was something that we were trying to, you know, accomplish and, and, and get a hold of them. So I've been there and I wear their t-shirt and I'm out there, you know, when people ask me about him, I share that information. Um, just not the level that my child will ever be at. So I'm kind of looking for the more, uh, I don't know what we're like a more basic um, environment. What, what we call customized sure. employment. Yes, and yes, I'm looking for someone who, who has, <laughs> you know, a, a child with the same general um, um, ways about them that would, you know, that are challenges for employers that I'm going to have to somehow overcome. Right. So the good thing about beans, you know, it was a mom who, so, yes. so nobody had to convince this mom to hire, you know what I mean? Right. Like, it's it's a beautiful beautiful place it's an amazing i love going in there like it's just amazing i love it there um and i i do think it would be beneficial to bring somebody in um i'm just asking if we could perhaps e expand the our thoughts um to include um behavioral issues and so forth that we would be able to talk about i i would love to hear somebody who has had a positive experience and maybe I could learn something. Um, so I will definitely put that on um, our uh, our list of um, uh, information that we would like to, you know, um, receive and see if I have a speaker from our employment division <laughs> to, you know, to discuss more of customized employment. I think we have some time uh, back some, but we can definitely, you know, do that and revisit that again because it, like I said, it is a focus of the department and we're excited about that, that we, we hired the director of employment services to help, you know, focus and, and go that direction. And we do have uh, a number of providers um, that were uh, particularly uh, certified as for customized employment. There's not a lot of providers, but there are, you know, a handful of providers that that is uh, a, a focus that they have, so. That would be great, thank you. Donna, I just I just want to mention one thing. Ellen had the same issue with a job and liability was a huge problem. Um, she could go and volunteer her time until the cows came home, but yeah. they wouldn't pay her because of liability. So that's a big thing. But yes, Adriana. Hi, everyone. I just wanted Hi. to comment a little bit about this because I was at a meeting in Wallingford uh, DDS recently, and I think you guys talked about the virtual one, um, talking about employment and getting, you know, feedback. And we talked about the same thing and how it's going out into the community when it comes to businesses and really finding those champions that are doing, you know, doing it and accomplishing it and 
having um, success and highlighting them to show other organizations, other even small organizations. Because I think um, the larger conglomerates probably won't catch on until they see the smaller ones with the competition, all of a sudden highlighting success and everything else. And I almost feel like our local community uh, shops or businesses can really be the catalyst to the larger organizations kind of catching on and showing how it's done. And I agree with the informational session because I believe that is a big barrier, the myths or not understanding the human resource part of it when it comes to things that they always talk about liability or how do we whatever, whatever, fill in whatever you want. And that seems to be also a big barrier when it comes to organizations. Um, and I think especially, you know, larger ones, they have a difficult time trying to understand. So it's almost starting within the community and catch that catalyst and highlight them everywhere, show what the successes are and and really catch on fire where it's everyone else is going to be like, oh, wait a minute, we want, you know, if they can do that, we could do that um, kind of thing. Um, so I just wanted to share what we talked a little bit about during our session. I think that there are also a lot of um, parents who've considered doing things like Beans and Company. Um, but I think, you know, financially, that's that's a huge burden. Um, and, you know, wouldn't it be wonderful if you could work together with DDS and families and, you know, do similar work um, that Beans is doing? So, well, it seems like employment's a big topic. <laughs> Maybe we can, uh, Mom, I got, I got a question. Maybe hmm. we can um, do some, maybe we can ask CCLC, the farm stand, maybe we can ask them if they can help us. No, you're right. Another nonprofit. No. Yeah, it's another nonprofit too. Right. Should right. we do that? Or I don't know if we should or not. I, I don't know. know. But it's, it's a thought, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Is there any other things to be discussed? Okay, wow. I don't know, this, is this like a record? <laughs> On how quickly? Um, I guess for adjournment, yes? Okay. All right, thank you everybody for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good night. Thank you, ladies.